Vice Admiral David Johnson, Royal Australian Navy, has recorded a long and distinguished career. He has served as Chief of Joint Operations since May 2014, having previously served as Commanding Officer of Frigates HMAS Adelaide, HMAS Newcastle. Deployments include Operation Slipper to the Middle East Area of Operations and Operation Quick Step, Humanitarian Aid to Fiji. Speaker, Vice Admiral David Johnson. It is an honour for me to stand with you on this Anzac Day, our most solemn day of national reflection, commemorating the men and women who served and continue to serve our nation proudly, courageously and selflessly. Many paid the ultimate sacrifice never to see our wonderful shores, their home, friends, family or loved ones again. Others came home carrying the burden of their service, both physically and mentally. It is with this sentiment we stand together with dawn looming in front of one of Melbourne's and the nation's iconic landmarks. It is a building of reverence, reflection, solace, a place Victorians can visit during times of deep loss and loneliness, a memorial for both private or as we do today, collective remembrance. Commemorating Anzac Day evokes deep emotions and means different things to different people. Many of us have our own experience of service to tell. Many may know someone who has served or is currently serving. No matter what the personal meaning, all of us are touched in some way by both the story of Anzac and what I believe to be the Anzac spirit. Both the Anzac story and the Anzac spirit reflect my personal experiences, firstly through my family and the story of two original Anzacs, but more recently through the 2,200 sailors, soldiers, airmen and airwomen currently deployed on operations across the globe under my command. My grandfather, Charles Fenton Robinson, a private in the 14th Battalion from Warrnambool, was amongst those who landed at Anzac Cove. He survived the horrors of Gallipoli only to join the even bloodier and brutal campaigns on the Western Front. Fortunately, having been wounded on multiple occasions, he returned safely home. In contrast, my wife's great uncle was less fortunate. John William Best, a private in the 1st Battalion, also fought at Gallipoli. An 18-year-old, he died during the 6th of August offensive and is buried in the Lone Pine Cemetery. His brother, who was also at Gallipoli, did not know that John had landed there. Just over four weeks ago, I stood at the grave of Private John Best at Lone Pine. As I walked through the battlefields at Gallipoli, I asked myself, what did it take to stay and fight in this rugged, unforgiving terrain against an equally determined and respected enemy? Standing in the trenches of the neck, I imagine the hardship and the conditions, the brutality, the horror, the fear, the relentless nature of battle and the ever-present prospect of death. Countering these thoughts, I focused on what I can only describe to be a collective spirit to persist and endure, a spirit founded in courage, determination, dedication, humour, and what some may call uniquely Australian, the bond of mateship. Today, the responsibility of maintaining Australia's hard-earned reputation on operations rests in the hearts minds and deeds of our current service men and women. They, like the original Anzacs, answer our nation's call, motivated by the Anzac story. Every one of them a volunteer, fully aware of our proud military history and the loss and sacrifices made, including most recently during our nation's ongoing operations in Afghanistan, Iraq, and the broader Middle East. 
As the Chief of Joint Operations, I have the privilege of leading our wonderful men and women who are currently deployed on these operations. These are different conflicts and roles, but a number are in familiar names and places. Today, now, there are Australian Defence Force men and women conducting peacekeeping operations in Lebanon, in the Golan Heights, in South Sudan and in the Sinai, countering piracy and terrorism at sea on the Indian Ocean. In Afghanistan, Iraq and across the Middle East, Australian servicemen and women are supporting these nations to restore peace, security and prosperity to their lands. Closer to home, every day, our people are on duty providing assurance to our citizens and defending our national interests, domestically delivering disaster relief in times of need, regionally through humanitarian assistance and disaster relief, most recently in Fiji. Visiting our men and women deployed on operations, I sense a spirit in a uniquely understated Australian way. Unassuming confidence, balanced with a sense of pragmatic compassion, commitment and determination in their eyes, humour in their conversations and a touch of larrikin in their practical jokes, dedication and persistence through their actions during times of adversity and hardship, bravery and assuredness through their selfless deeds during times of uncertainty and danger and mateship and teamwork in everything that they do. But I also see the spirit in those who continue to fight to overcome the mental and physical injuries that they suffer from their service. I don't just see this on Anzac Day. I have the privilege of seeing what I believe to be the spirit every day. All of us deserve to be immensely proud of the Anzac spirit and the pulse that beats strongly in today's servicemen and women.